technical training, I'm Matthew. In this video, we're looking at the ZK Teco Atlas controller. Um, I'm using the, the four door controller. Uh, connected to that, I will have the QR600 reader. Um, mainly in this video, I'm using it for RFID, but it is a QR code reader. And in a subsequent video, I'll show you how to use the QR code reader. Um, the controller is as you can see here, it's PCB only. It's a case only. So along with the QR600, I'm also going to be using the metal case to house it in, um, which also includes the power supply for it. So first things first, the controller has a default IP address uh, in the 169 range. So that means we need to change our network adapter to suit the new installation. So in your search bar, if you type in network and go to settings, uh, take you to the network settings. This is in Windows 11. Uh, go to advanced network settings, go to your Wi-Fi, click on edit. And then from here, we're going to change the uh, IPv4. We can change the network address, the, the adapter address, sorry, of your computer. Um, we would need to change it to one, six nine two five four two zero two and then tab maybe and then press tab i'll populate the subnet mask information for you and then click ok and what that will do now is change the adapter in your computer to the same uh, range as the controller um, and then when we can go to the controller and we can change its IP address back to something that which suits your network itself. Once you've made those changes, I'll show you in the video, but once you've made the changes, you come back to this window and click obtain IP address automatically. And typically that'll put you into a 192 range if it's on a domestic or it could be a 10 or 172, but it'll put you back into the range. The important part is when you're assigning an IP address to the Atlas controller, you either ask your customer what their IP address needs to be if it's going to commercial or if it's going on your customer site and it's in a domestic application you can use a CMD command and type in IP config and you can see here it will tell you the range the IP4 range that it's on now so you can see my range is 192.168.1.223 that means when you add a device to the network, you want to put it in the 192.168.1 and then it's unique address for the device. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the controller. To do the admin on the Atlas controller, we need to browse into it using a web browser. I'm going to use Chrome in my example here. So let's go to the device. Default address for the device is 169.254.202. Dot two four two. Let's browse into that. Uh, log into it. Admin. Admin. Sign in. And then we'll come to a wizard. So we we'll just go through these steps here to, to set a thing up. So what language? English. Now I should explain. This is going to be the top end controller, the master controller. So that dictates how this interface is going to be. And I'm only using a prox controller. If you're using a biometric controller, you would need to make sure that the biometric controller is at the top of the tree. So anyway, uh, English is my default language. Is this the primary, the, the master controller, or the secondary primary? Next step. What type of controller is it and the name? So if it's that was series, or we could call it a, a name that suits us. Let's call it a, a name. Or you could call the name of the door, it's working or whatever you like. Uh, click next. It's configuration. Um, we're going to have four doors in and out in this instance. And then we'll click next step. Time zone. Time zone's always difficult to find. Where is it? There it is, London. Next step. And the new password to do the admin. Next step. 
we want to configure the IP4 address as manual. We want a static IP. We don't want to use DHCP. We want to get a static IP address that we, it's going to be stuck into this device. So if you power it down and power it back up, it's going to be on the same address. So let's change it to one that's more suitable for my site, for example. So, uh, for my site, that's okay. Uh, next step. Is all that information correct? Yes. Click on complete setup and the device will power down and power back up. So now we need to go back to the um, network adapter and change the network adapter to um, where is it? There it is. To a more open uh, address. So we're, we, we're acquiring a DHCP address from the router, which in my case will be the 192 range. Click OK to that. OK to that. Come out of there. Now, if we go back to the address we set for the device, we should be able to log in. And we get this warning. Proceed. And that will take us to the login screen where we can add users now and create time zones and what have you. So let's log in, remembering your new password. And there we are, That's, uh, we're now in the interface for the um, Atlas controller. And from here we can um, set the device up and um, program in some parameters. So in the controller now, we can um, do some admin. So first of all, we've got some issues here. We've got the controllers, um, power issues, and a tamper alarm. Now, I'm running mine on PoE, and you might be running yours on PoE too. So you're going to get mains alarms. If you're doing that, we need to fix that. So let's go to config and hardware. There's our controller. Click on that. Scroll down, and here's your inputs. So we're going to turn off battery fail. There's no battery if it's PoE. Um, lid tamper. Really, should be you should put it in its enclosure so, and tamper protect it as well. But um, in my instance, I'm not. You know, it's an enclosure. I, I don't really need to put it in any enclosure. So let's turn the tamper off. Um, and if you need, if yourself you need to do any um, other, I'll turn AC fail off as well. If you need to do any other. Um, modifications you can such as door sensors um you, you might be monitoring the door for being open or closed um might be using a, an oddball device which is open going closed rather than closed going open so this is where we change the input from closed to open or open to closed so that's the um, inputs don't forget to press save if we go back home you see the Controllers are okay, users are okay, uh, doors are okay. Again, we'll just get this one here not registered. Once I'm online with this controller, I've got an internet connection, I can register it and then uh, the software will be registered. Next, we need to create your access levels. So uh, a user um, has got access to certain areas. Uh, in my instance, every user will have access to every door. I'm using the four door controller. But you know, it's the same procedure whether it's a one, two, or four door controller. So let's go to access, access levels, and then create. Let's give it a name. You don't need to be too creative. Doors, add that. Select which doors? In my case, all doors. And click OK. So that means if I create a user and I give them the access level door, they will add in all the doors all the doors in this group here if i created another door saying front or front door then they're only allowed through the door which would be the front door which is um door one you can also add an um, access level a time zone to these if you want to i'm going to leave it as 24 7. that means you're allowed in all the time when you're done click save and then we can go back home one of the last things we need to do is for an effective system is to set the time and date. So admin, um, time and date. And you can see here we can set the time and date. All we have to do is untick that because I've not got a network connection. If you did have, you could leave that and it'll synchronize the time and date properly. 
but I need to untick that and set the server set the time according to the the current browser. And click save. Back in. And you can see now at the top uh, it's changed the time and date um, to match the time and date that it actually is. It's the time that I've got set in my browser. Okay, with all that set, um, we are now ready to add a user to the system. First of all, we need to um, configure the reader to accept um, QR codes, but mainly to send the information in the right format. It needs to be in Wigand 26 bit. So let's have a look at the, um, the screenshot. First of all, you need to go to the ZK Techo EU website and on the software tab, download a product called Demo. It might be QR500, QR600 Demo, but you just simply download this little utility. It doesn't have a full installation file. It's just um, a standalone application. Save that somewhere and from the folder it's saved in, launch the program and that will give you the um, configuration utility. Make sure your reader's plugged in. You don't need to be, it doesn't need to be powered up. Just plug it in to the reader, uh, to the USB port on your machine and the reader will power up from there. Then you click on um, connect. And as you see here, it connects. And you know you're connected because it tells you what version you've got and what, what reader you've got. Um, so with that done, at the top there you can see like a little pin. Click on that and then go to advanced setup. In this window, we can change its configuration. So we just go to the um, Wigand QR setting and simply, on the pull down menu there, change it to 66 bit, W66, WG66. Um, the QR codes are um, dynamic, changes every time you launch the app. And this way you, you capture the full number. Once you've done that, click right and that is now saved into the reader. The reader's configured and ready to go. So to add a QR credential to um, to the reader, uh, to the system, sorry, we then go to Access, Users, and Create, and we're going to call this um, QR, QR Code 1, and we go through here, and we can set up um, times and dates when it's valid from and to. But really what we need to do, I'm just going to skip a step, go to access levels. We created an access level called doors. That means you're allowed through all the doors um, where you've got a valid reader, where the, where the reader installed. So what we're interested in is cards. QR let's code, add. Um, card number, let's say 23. And it says here, we can't share because it's unsaved. So let's save that. And scroll back down. And this time you can see the share box, there's a, a share symbol there. So let's click on that. Now that gives you a QR code. That isn't the QR code to, to give you access to the door. That's a QR code you save to the app. Now, if you go to your app store and download the app, it's called Atlas Z Key. You can download that app and you are ready to go. So with that installed, here we are, here's the app. Um, it says add new key. So there's two things we can do. Let's click on add new key um, QR code. We can either type in this code here and we can copy it to the dash um, to the clipboard and we can send this to, the, to your client, your colleague or whatever. You can send it in an email, a text message. Or you can ask them to copy this QR code um, and either open it in, directly from the phone or maybe share to a screen and they can open it that way. But you've got two means of um, doing it. Now, typically with um, most brands, what they do is copy this code and send instructions to your client on how where to get the app from. So in my case, um, the, the app store and I simply downloaded the app. Right, so um, enter registration code or scan the QR code. So let's scan the QR code. There we go, there's a code saved into the phone and then click OK. Back 
to monitor. So now if um, I present my QR code to the reader, we should get valid access now. So let's give that a go. There we are. Um, the code was accepted, the door was opened, and there we are. That's how you set up a QR code. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.